How's it going guys? I'm Theo Jaleo and today I'm going to be answering the question, is it possible to have too much RAM in your computer? And the answer is simply no. That's it. All right, yeah, yeah, I know, we need to dig a little bit deeper than that. And it really matters what I mean by too much RAM. So is there some amount of RAM that could somehow hinder your performance for your computer? The answer to that is obviously no. But assuming if you're going to build a computer, you have a budget, a finite amount of money to spend on the whole computer, could you get too much RAM? And obviously the answer could be yes, because if you don't need a certain amount and you spend a ton more on RAM, well, it's not gonna be used and then you could have allocated that money to other things like CPU or GPU that would create better performance that you're not gonna get just blowing it all on RAM. And you also have to consider what quality of RAM. If you get a ton of slow RAM now and you don't even need all of it, then if you want to go and upgrade your RAM at a later time, you're gonna have to replace all of it. Whereas if you get only what you need now and you get it fast RAM, then you can just add more fast RAM later. Whereas again, like I said, if you get slow RAM, you're gonna have to replace it all, rebuy it all. But how much RAM do you really need in the first place? Well, I would say in my opinion these days, eight gigabytes is like the bare minimum for any computer, no matter what you're gonna be using it for, eight gigabytes is the absolute bare minimum. These days, RAM is definitely not expensive enough to justify going any less than eight gigabytes. Now, if you're gonna be doing gaming, again, eight gigabytes is the bare minimum, but I would definitely say if you're gonna be doing gaming, go to 16 gigabytes. That's usually the recommended amount of RAM for most modern higher end games. And if especially if you wanna be playing higher than like 1080p. Now, if you're gonna be doing creative work like video editing, and especially if you're gonna be doing like it professionally, and you're gonna be doing multiple creative applications like maybe Photoshop and Premiere Pro at the same time, I would definitely say probably try to get up to like 32 gigabytes of RAM is a good amount. Maybe 24, you could probably get away with as well. 16 gigabytes, it might do, but you might be a little bit hard pressed. You might be straining your pro video editor if you're only at 16. 32 should be definitely enough. On my computer, I do have 32 gigabytes. I pretty much never see it max out. I don't know if I ever ha actually have. So even 24, like I said, gigabytes probably would be fine. And this is including when I'm doing like Photoshop work at the same time a video is rendering, it's pretty much fine at 32. So if you can afford it, you may as well just get 32 and not worry about it. Now, what about VRAM? That's another type of RAM, right? Yes, well, that's gonna be built into the graphics card. You don't really have to worry about picking that out individually, but it is important to know how much VRAM your graphics card does have. So if you're gonna be doing 1080p gaming, you're not gonna upgrade that at all ever. Four gigabytes is probably a good amount of VRAM, but if you do wanna do like 1440p gaming, at some point, definitely get a graphics card, I would say with like eight gigabytes. And that's definitely so if you're gonna be doing 4K gaming, like eight gigabytes is probably the minimum there. I know some graphics cards have like 12 gigabytes, really get as much as you can. So why don't we go over some examples for recommended specs in modern games. So the first one we can do is Modern Warfare. Look, it says modern right in the title. It says minimum eight gigabytes of RAM and recommended though, at 12 gigabytes of RAM, and that's if you want to do like 60 FPS on medium settings, which honestly, if you're gonna be playing a game on your PC, probably 60 FPS is like the minimum you want anyway. You don't want to be dropping much below that. So I would say like 12 gigabytes is probably what it should be minimum. And then it also has competitive and high-end recommended at 16 gigabytes. So again, really, I don't know why you would want to have less than 16 gigabytes. If you're gonna be playing any game, you have to like turn down the settings, that's no fun. Another game we can look at is Borderlands 3. It has a minimum at six gigabytes and two gigabytes of VRAM. And this is for if you're gonna just playing in 1080p. But for recommended, it says 16 gigabytes and that's gonna be if you're playing at 1440p and also has a recommended of six gigabytes VRAM. Now for an older game like The Witcher 3, this is like a AAA game for 2015. It has a minimum of six gigabytes, which is less than the eight we've seen before, and the recommended is actually eight gigabytes. Now again, if you're gonna be playing at a higher resolution like 1440p or 4K, or you're gonna be playing with a, I don't know, high-end texture pack or something, you're gonna have to bump that up probably to 16. And besides games, we can also look at a recommended for Adobe Premiere Pro. This is the video editing software I use. It actually has a minimum of eight gigabytes, and the recommended is 16 gigabytes for HD video, and it actually does recommend 32 gigabytes for 4K and up. So to comment on a lot of this, basically I would say in my opinion, 
eight gigabytes, if you're gonna be doing gaming, is really not enough. I would say that's like the bare minimum garbage computer. Like you just wanna be able to run the games on lowest settings. But if you actually wanna like enjoy the games decently and be able to enjoy the visuals, probably just go with 16 gigabytes. It's not gonna cost you that much more money. Just get that. So that's all about the amount of RAM, but what about RAM speed? Now, I did make a video entirely about this, talking about RAM speed in terms of the clock speed and latency of the RAM, because you need to know both of these. I made an old video about this on my old channel. I'll have the pop out right here that you can watch. I'll summarize it here. Basically, to know the actual performance of the RAM you're gonna have, you need to not only know the clock speed, but also the latency. They tie in perfectly together and you need to know both sides of the equation. Because the RAM frequency is the number of clock cycles per second or number of operations per second, and the RAM latency is the delay in when that command is executed, and it's a delay in number of clock cycles. So basically, the actual true response time and performance of the RAM is going to be determinant not just of the frequency, not just of the latency, but the actual multiplication of the two together. So basically you could have a high frequency, high latency RAM that might perform exactly the same as a low frequency, low latency RAM. And one of them might even be cheaper, but you could probably get the same performance out of both of them. Now, if you don't understand what I just said, don't worry, you have to watch that other video. That's where I explained it in full. Please don't complain in the comments that I didn't explain it because I'm not gonna make an entire new video if it's right there. And in that other video, I actually did mention a spreadsheet that I updated recently and I'll put in the description where I basically created a spreadsheet with a calculation of the true response time of different latencies versus the frequency of RAM and then the actual best existing response time and performance RAM that exists based on like new egg availability. So I'll put that link in the description if you want to check it out. But again, you have to look, you have to watch the video to understand what the heck I'm talking about. Really, this is just the basics. One thing I did not mention at the time in that video though is max memory bandwidth. I should point out that one additional factor is if you do have two sets of RAM, meaning they might have different frequencies and uh, CS latencies, if they have the same exact response time, you probably want to get the one that has the higher frequency up to the point of your maximum bandwidth of your CPU. I described this in the spreadsheet, but basically a CPU is gonna have a maximum bandwidth and you probably want to get as close to that maximum bandwidth as you can with the RAM. The maximum bandwidth does have a calculation to get that. It's basically the effective clock times the bus width, which is eight bytes for DDR4, and then the number of channels, and then you just multiply that out. I put that in the spreadsheet as well. So basically you should try and get the best response time, but also kind of balance that out with you want one that at least the maximum bandwidth of what your CPU is capable of handling. So anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to go over in this video. I'll put that link to my old video again right here if you wanna check that out. Definitely watch that. It's one of my better videos, I think. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.